Hey there, and welcome to Section 3, where we're going to be talking about managing access and authentication. In this module, we'll be specifically going into more managing authentication, and so let's dive in. So we really have to understand and design the right method of authentication for our users in M365 and Azure Active Directory. So ask yourself this, how do you want your users to authenticate? And with this in mind, there's two main methods you're going to want to consider. The first is just a basic authentication, which is basically proxied authentication. And that is where the client sends the authentication request and user credentials to Azure Active Directory or AD on-prem for that request. You can also leverage what is known as modern authentication, which is a little bit more secure method because it leverages things like multi-factor authentication, the use of smart cards, certificates, and or SAML-based authentication providers. When we talk about identity, we really have to understand how the different methods work with regards to validating our identity. And it's important to note there are a lot of different methods here. So some of these examples are things like passwords, which most everybody is familiar with. But in modern times, there's additional methods of validation that use app-based authentication methods, SMS text, or additional security questions, which, again, if you've done password resets for any online service, you can see where things like your know, mother's maiden name or your birth date or things like that may be asked of you to help validate your identity which is where security questions really help validate when resetting those passwords. The Azure Authenticator app is a great mobile app that runs on iOS or Android that allows you to do a pin-based authentication that is another method or factor of authentication to help validate identity. And there is a complete list because there's more concepts that are available as well. You can click that link there for additional information and concepts. Our first demonstration of this module is going to be around the setup and management of different authentication methods. So as you can see here, I'm back in my demo. I'm in the Admin Center. I'm going to go into Azure Active Directory. I'm back in Azure Active Directory, and here's my dashboard. And now I'm going to go into my Azure Active Directory. I'm going to go ahead and go into my Users section here and I'm going to go under the password reset and in here and as you saw in the previous modules that I've done with regards to the self-service setup we're going to go into the section here under authentication methods and with these authentication methods you can see that the listed methods available to users are going to be provided here now just as we did with the self-service password reset, these settings are only going to apply to end users in the organizations. Admins are always enabled for self-service password reset, so the different methods of authentication is going to be available to them by default. But as you can see here, I can specify one or two different methods that are going to be required to reset, right? This is just basically defining the different methods that a user is going to have inside of the directory to reset their password. Most organizations will do things like email organizations or security questions. And if you select security questions, you can see that there's going to be a bunch of different options that pre-populate there. But you can do mobile app notification, which then has a registration process that you can see. You can also do mobile app code, which same premise. It's going to require a mobile app re registration or MFA establishment. But the idea there is that any one of these can be selected, and as long as the required prerequisites are established, i.e. MFA or something along those lines, it actually works really well. For the purpose of the security questionnaire, the basic breakdown is that you can select the number of questions that are going to be required to answer and then the number of questions that are going to be needed to reset. So in this example, you can see I'm going to present five questions, three of which need to be correct, or I can be very specific and strict and say, you know what, I'm going to give you three questions, all three need to be correct. When I go in and say, listen, I'm going to 
provide you with those questions. There are a bunch of different predefined security questions that are broken down here. Anything like, where were you born? What city was your mother born in? What's the name of your childhood hero? I mean, there's a bunch of them, and, and most organizations will stick to the predefined ones. And if those don't work, you can define your own security question and answer here. And so if you worked for a company that has a mascot or perhaps a, a logo or something like that, you could provide something a little bit more specific and provide a, a answer that could be provided here based on you know what that user inputs. But again, that's where you're going to go in and select those different authentication methods for those users inside of Azure Active Directory. So pretty straightforward in, in setting that up. We're going to take a quick second. We're going to dive into our second demonstration right out the gate on self-service password reset. All right, so if you remember when we were talking about setting up self-service password reset, we were talking about the different authentication options we just went through as well as the different options around the password reset properties. We did not, however, dive into specific details on registration and notifications. But the one thing to really take away is if you are going to establish self-service password reset and you've defined your methods and security questions and things like that, when you go to the passwordreset.microsoftonline.com, it's important to know a couple things. One, the user needs to register the different methods of which they're going to get contacted around password reset. So as you went back in here, the, the email, the mobile phones, the options that are available to them, they're going to be prompted and provided, and they need to enter that relative information. So for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm going to do the Thor account that we created a while back and we're going to provide the little CAPTCHA information again to provide that we're not a bot or any kind of a scripted attack. And then, as you can see here, once that has been validated, I can have this send me an alternative email, or I can provide them with my, my phone, as I've specified in my subscription. The options are already defined there because prior to this demo, I went through and did this for the Thor account. But for the purpose of this, I'll select email, click verify. It's going to provide me with a code, at which point I'm going to go in and get prompted to verify my email, which in my other screen here, I see my code here. And then that completed verification step one. It'll then prompt me to enter the phone number for the step two, which for the purpose of this demo and the fact that it's tied to my personal cell phone, I won't prompt in. But as you can see, once the second step is verified, I'll then get prompted to enter a new password. And it's basically that simple with regards to password reset. So as long as your settings and information are set up correctly in Azure AD, and the person is registered and provided their verification steps and options, then you're good to go and you've been able to successfully allow a user to reset their password using self-service password reset. Another pretty straightforward and easy demonstration to go over. Next, we're going to talk about certificate-based Azure AD authentication. Now, there is no need for username password combinations when you use certificate-based Azure AD, or if you want, you can leverage it as a means of MFA. Now, certificate-based authentication is going to be supported on Windows or Android or iOS-enabled devices. Now, there are some requirements to consider with regards to certificate-based authentication, and the first one is going to be that it's only supported for federated environments for browser-based apps or where the native clients use the modern authentication through the Active Directory Authentication Library, or ADAL. Now, the Exchange Active Sync process in Exchange Online is going to be exempt from this particular requirement and can be used with both federated and managed accounts. The Root Certificate Authority, or CA, and any other intermediate CAs that are going to be established have to be integrated with Azure Active Directory. 
That also means that the certificate authority has to have the certificate revocation list published inside of Azure Active Directory, and it must be accessible to the Internet. You also need to have access to at least one certificate authority that issues out those client certificates. Now, this can be Windows, Android, iOS devices, whatever they are. They have to have access to that CA. The other thing to consider, too, is that the devices themselves must have a valid certificate installed on the client directly. And a complete list of details and requirements on setting up certificate-based authentication is going to be provided by clicking the link at the bottom of this slide. Our last demonstration for the module is going to go over monitoring authentication and some auditing information within Access and Authentication, Azure Active Directory, and M365. All right, so as you can see, I'm back in my demo, and I'm inside the Admin Center, and I'm going to go back into Azure Active Directory, which I've got selected here. I'm going to go into my main dashboard here, scroll down to where my monitoring section and column is here, and I'm going to start with sign-ins. As you can see here, if I click sign-ins, I can set up different filters based on how I want to view this information. I can download and then export it and do any kind of monitoring and troubleshooting log uploads here. As you can see, this showcases today's activity with the different account accesses and different applications that are leveraged to include successes and failures and you know other information like IP addresses applied here and things like that. If I want to dive a little bit deeper, I can go into the audit logs, which is going to allow me to view all the different information around changes that have occurred within Azure Active Directory, removing or adding accounts or doing any kind of updates that are going to be applied. And as you can see here, there's a variety of different services that are going to be listed in here. So most recently, we've done some self-service password resets, obviously. We've done some core updates to users. We've done a lot of basic user management with some of the internal accounts. And as you can see, the status is going to say, you know, success or failure. The activity is going to be a defined here. And as what you can see here is the initiated by and the specific actor that's going to be applied here. So... Much like with the sign-in information, I can download, I can refresh and export this data and filter it out based on specific information I'm looking for. If I go up to the security section, there's a couple different things that you want to look at here as well. One is risky sign-ins. Now, risky sign-ins, while there isn't any information in this particular demonstration, the risky sign-ins basically provides you with all of the data about sign-in activity that Microsoft themselves has flagged using the Microsoft graph and security mechanisms that they deem is suspicious. And so based on that information, it'll provide you with a list of outcomes here. Now, for example, if you're leveraging a product like the E3 suite, which includes EMS and the Cloud App Security and Office component, you can do some conditional access and flagging and things like that to where any kind of risky or suspicious activities with an account may get flagged here as well. And if I click on Learn More, it's going to take me directly to the Docs page that shows me the different types of views that it's going to show and how it's organized and structured to include some additional information there as well. The other piece is going to be the users flagged for risk or risky users. And again, same here. For the purpose of this demo, there's not going to be a lot of data to view at on this screen, but this is going to provide me with a list of users that Microsoft has suggested may have had some sort of a compromised activity. So this is where we can start to leverage different policy-based activities and actions around that suspicious behavior to either lock or invoke a multi-factor authentication request or simply just, you know, lock or disable the account until the user checks back in with an admin or a support ticket. But that information would be displayed here. 
And those are pretty much your main factors with regards to monitoring and logging and auditing authentication and identity access within Azure Active Directory. And that concludes the first module of Section 3. Our next module will dive a little bit deeper into the actual implementation and setup of multi-factor authentication.